Here on the table, we've got seven Lenovo OEM motherboards that I've pulled from OEM systems. Now I got these for super cheap at 15 Aussie dollars a pop because they were untested. But most recently on the channel here, I have come into a problem in relation to these older OEM systems and a thing known as bit rot, where I reflashed the BIOS and everything was working fine again. So what I'm gonna do here today on the channel is I'm gonna go through each of these boards individually, see if they have problems before we sort of clean them up and reflash the BIOS and sort of grab a mini sample size of statistics from these boards right here. But another thing I'm going to do too is since in the X58 video, we had actually a semi-faulty board that we brought back by cleaning the CPU motherboard pins. And this was like a last resort for me. I had nothing to lose. Only one channel of dim worked originally, but after we cleaned the pins, we got all those channels and dim slots back to working. So that was really surprising, but I'll show you guys what we do for that later. But we've also got here lastly, a H61 MK motherboard that I'm gonna to attempt to bend back a lot of pins on and see if we can get this working too. Have you just won the lotto? Then if so, the Z490 ASRock Aqua is for you with its built-in 10G NIC, onboard Wi-Fi 6, ESS Sabre DAC and AMP audio solution, PCA4 ready OLED display and USB 3.2 out at the front and Thunderbolt at the rear, and most importantly, an integrated water block to get that 10900K to the maximum it can go. Find out more with the links in the description below. So we've got some good news here with our Lenovo motherboard, the first one. This is the M91, and unfortunately with this H61 motherboard, it doesn't have an option in the BIOS to disable secure boot. And we recently looked at this in a video where we put a build together where it wouldn't work with the GTX 645 before the update and after the update. And this is the same story with this motherboard, but what's weird about it is after we've updated the BIOS, we can use a GTX 1060. So what that means is that Zotac are using a sort of a trick on their VBIOS to work with some of these older boards in that these motherboards were only programmed to support a heap of different graphics cards. And if you were off that list, for instance, the GTX 645, then it just simply wouldn't boot up. And now in the BIOS itself, there is no option to disable secure boot. So you're basically forced to put in a graphics card that will work or it doesn't work. And unfortunately, that's what you're limited to. But the good news is, at least with these Zotac cards right here, I'm surprised that this 1060, which was released years after this 2014 BIOS update, is able to work. So at least Zotac have done some good things on that in that their cards will work with this M91 uh, Lenovo. Now, one thing about this Think Center H61 is that it does differ from other Think Centers in that some of them do have the option to enable CSM, disable secure boot, but also this one has a 24 pin as opposed to some of them having that uh, standard Lenovo 14 pin connector, which you then have to get a converter to 24 pin. So this one does have some good and bad news, but at least with the bad news, we were able to overcome that. Thanks to Zotac having some good UEFI firmware on board that's able to work with this particular motherboard though. That's one for one now with our OEM boards. We don't have to clean any pins because everything's working fine. Let's move on now to the next one. So the next Think Center M91P is the exact same story. It's working absolutely fine. The dual channel uh, two sticks of memory is working fine with the i5-2400. GTX 1060 is now booting up after a BIOS update. So that is now two for two. And in terms of cleaning CPU pins, hopefully we come into a problem because then I'll show you guys that method because basically if you don't need to fix something, I don't recommend fixing something. So there's one really important saying in Australia and that is if it's not f don't fix it. So we are now three for three with our Lenovo boards here. And this is some really good news already, but you may notice there's this Aero 0135 fan failure. And basically on these M91s and also the LDH61 Lenovo's, there's usually two fan headers on the motherboard itself. And so if you don't have both the fan headers plugged up, it will give you out error messages. So all you have to do is basically have two fans plugged in off the motherboard and you will no longer get this error. And there's no really way to get past it because again, the BIOS is so limited on this motherboard.
So next up here, we've got an H81 Lenovo. This is from the Think Center M73. Now this is actually one of my personal favorites and there's a few reasons why. The first being that it does have those options in the BIOS. You can disable secure boot, enable CSM. So basically any graphics card is going to work with this motherboard. But also the M73s generally support the Haswell refresh uh, CPU. So if you come into an i7 4790 and not just a 4770, then unlike some other OEMs, I've had problems with Aces, especially HPs, where they just won't work. And then the BIOS update isn't there to even get Haswell refresh working. This uh, works with Haswell refresh, and but the only drawbacks is that you need this adapter right here, 14 pin to 24 pin, if you want to use a different power supply and then use something like a GTX 1060. Another hurdle to overcome is, in the case of this board right here, there was a password upon booting up the system. And the only way to get around this, and at least there is a workaround, is to turn everything off, put the clear CMOS jumper in the clear position, and then turn the system back on and leave it on for more than 10 seconds. And you will hear a beep coming off this motherboard. Once it's beeping two times, then you can uh, turn it all off and the password will disappear because then the BIOS has been completely reset. Also, another good thing about these boards is that they're just newer in general. The BIOS build date's almost 2015, so it's really going to be a lot less susceptible to coming to that bit rot problem as we spoke about before. But also we've got USB 3 on the back, official VR support with those uh, fourth generation and onwards. Though on this particular model, the only downside is there's no USB 3 front out. Though you can get around that by getting a, a USB 3 to USB 2 converter. So there's some really good news, and that is we've got seven out of seven untested motherboards all working absolutely fine. Though there are some things I'll run through with you guys about OEM boards, in particular this uh, M91P. And that is, even after updating the BIOS, you have eight gigabytes of RAM that works in dual channel absolutely fine. So these two sticks right here, this is a King Max stick and a Crucial stick, and they work perfectly fine, so registering is eight uh, gigabytes of RAM, and there's no problems whatsoever. But then these two sticks here, they I know these work in, uh, say, a Zeus motherboard or something like that, but they won't work in this motherboard. They just don't work at all. They'll give out a beeping error. I'll let you guys take a quick listen. And so we can see already the actual type of RAM used can be the issue. And now the last one is the most interesting because these two G-Skill sticks work on their own in different slots. So the memory itself is working absolutely fine. There's no problems there. But when we put both of them into dual channel at the same time, it still only registers as four gigabytes of RAM. So what we're gonna try and do here is maybe replicate the scenario that we had in the X58 build. And that is we're just gonna, for the sake of it, start cleaning the pins and show you guys how you can do it. Now, keep in mind, this is a last resort. I do not recommend uh, usually going anywhere near pins unless you have to, whether it be bending them back, which we're gonna be doing pretty soon with that other motherboard, or if it's just in the case of a last resort where you've done everything else, you've tried different memory, and you've got some generic OEM stuff that the green PCB matches the green PCB, and you've tried everything else and just nothing's working. So again, you've got nothing to lose. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna get a little stiffer brush that I got with my, uh, I think I got this with my data vac or my vacuum cleaner. And so you've gotta be very careful on which brush you would use. Don't use one that's gonna catch onto the pins and then start making a mess and bending them. Because as soon as these pins are bent, there's a big risk that you may not have your motherboard ever working again. So be very careful with pins, and I'm just putting that out there. Only do this if it's a last resort. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna now get some multi-purpose spray, and we're gonna spray that on, 
the pins and then start cleaning them very lightly, very softly. So we're making sure we're not bending any pins and we're just gonna make sure we give that a little clean and we'll come back and hey, maybe it might fix the problem. Maybe these, since these are only single rank and these are dual rank dims, maybe that might fix our problem. So these pins are now completely cleaned up and you'll notice we just took things very slowly and we were stroking against the grain of the pin itself. So from uh, it'd be top to bottom from the bottom left hand L here and then the top right L would be going upwards. And that way we can fix two things in one and that is if the pin heads themselves have developed a bit of corrosion over time or there's dust buildup then that will get off that dust and make the pin contact clean again. But also another thing I was told years ago by the BIOS team, I'm not gonna say which company, but they said pins can suffer over time from what's called micro bends. So doing what we just did here can alleviate both issues. And it was something that worked in, again, yesterday's X58 video. I was kind of surprised that it worked so well. Uh, but we'll give this a go now with the G skill memory and see if it's any better. But, but also another thing you can do is clean your CPU, which we did before. And I noticed actually a layer of dirt came off all the pin contacts. So that was good to see. And in terms of the multi-purpose spray, I get asked a lot all the time about this stuff. And it's something that's sold in Australia and I'm grateful that it's sold in Australia because it's like the best stuff I've worked with in terms of PC parts and something that's just a generic all-purpose spray. Overseas, the WD-40 is a lot thicker. The CRC556, I believe it is, is a good alternative, uh, but that's again, sold in limited countries. So I guess we're lucky to have this multi-purpose spray in Australia. And here's the last thing that I'm glad we did this because it's witness to the power of what we just did. So there's the two sticks of G-Skill memory now working absolutely fine and showing up as eight gigabytes of RAM. So this just proves that cleaning pins can help in this situation where otherwise we we're only getting four gigabytes of RAM showing up before, but now we've got eight gigabytes. So I'm actually really glad that in this video I had just like the X58 video, a real world example to show you of this working in practice. And now with the finale on this motherboard, essentially I bent all the pins back, but the problem was it was all in wasted effort because the board would boot up. It just wouldn't give out a signal at all. I tried different RAM, different CPUs, but it looked like for what it's worth, it was functioning okay. So I'm guessing the board itself was faulty 
and whoever uh, gave it to us essentially pulled the CPU out and then bent pins in the process. So sometimes, unfortunately, all you can do is give it your best. But that being said, we can still utilize the battery, which looked like it was fine, and utilize these little clips here on the uh, CMOS. And we've also got a Winbond BIOS that we can take out. And in the future, if we come into a faulty BIOS, we can change it over with this one. So not all is wasted. And we have just finished up with that Tech Yes Loving and seven of these eight motherboards are now working fine. I mean, that last board, the ASUS H61, I don't think that was going to work regardless. So I did my best to get those pins bent back, but one thing I know from past experience is if there's too many bent pins, it's usually not even worth the time and effort. In this case, I feel like that board was inherently faulty before the pins were even bent on it. So that fact that it had to remove CPU the way it did was, I'm pretty sure the board was faulty beforehand, but the seven of seven Lenovo boards working that were untested was a big win for me personally. I feel like usually I do come into one or two faulty boards, but on that note, we have done this new method now of cleaning the pins. And I am just really excited about this because it's something that I feel like if I applied this to a few of the boards in the past that I've tested here, I could have got those working again. So it's good to see that things like bit rot, if you reflash an old BIOS, and now if you clean pins and maybe get some corrosion off or dust off, that can help uh, bring a board that at a hardware level isn't defective working 100% again. And so that's one thing I love doing around Tech S City is getting the most out of that older gear. And I know there's going to be people out there that are like, why do you share this stuff and basically fuel your competitors? And it's not really about that. At the end of the day, I feel like at least the scene I'm making here on the Gold Coast is a really good one. Like there's all the other guys that I know that sell gaming PCs. We're all pretty much friends and we all get along really well. And I've found that the used price performance community is one of the best to be in in tech because there's never really any fanboy arguments that you get with new parts. And basically I find myself when I'm doing the new stuff and testing all that out, there's all these comments that I just get sick of reading and it sort of pulls me back to the used price performance stuff where there's just none of those arguments. Everyone's in it for the same reason. They wanna get the best value for their money. And so it's just a different sort of contrast between those two. But with all that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. I guess that's the most important thing. You guys are enjoying the content. A lot of you guys have been requesting I do more used uh, price performance content. So this was one of those things I just thought, well, I'll take you guys through uh, me sort of pulling OEM systems apart, going through all the trial and error stuff. Uh, sort of like a prelude to the upcoming Can Yes Fix It. We've got a big episode coming. A lot of people have sent stuff in, so stay tuned for that one. But with that aside, if you guys have tips and tricks of your own, then be sure to share them in the comments if you don't mind. I mean, I know some people out there don't like to share their secret sauce as they don't want to fuel the competition, but over the years, I really, I just, I mean, I started my whole channel off sharing tips and tricks, right? Back when we started going hard into used price performance, I was just like, well, I'll just show the world all this. And you guys loved it. And so that's the most important thing. You guys are loving the content and we're making an awesome community around it. But hopefully we're sharing some answers to questions that people have had, especially if they're on a strict budget. And I'll never forget the person who is on a real strict budget and they just want to get the most for their money because wherever they are in the world, they might not be as fortunate as you. Just remember that and don't forget about that. And with that aside, we got the question of the day here, so we'll read that out, which comes from Alexa Petrovic, and they ask, hey, I have a question. Will you ever do a Windows 10 2004 optimization? If so, when will it come out? I usually do the Windows 10 optimizations every two updates because I find that's when the major upgrades happen. I think 2004 though, is the second update where I haven't done the optimization guide for the one in between. So hopefully we'll check that all out. I This month is super busy, so I wanna get the Can Yes Fix It done. I gotta get a heap of like B550 and Z490 motherboard comparison reviews done. That's gonna be crazy. Like, like I don't know, it must, it must just be like motherboard season at the moment, because I've never been sent this many motherboards in the entirety of Tech Yes City. So with that aside, I'll catch you guys in the next tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that content and you're not yet subbed and you wanna see the content, the moment it drops, then the sub button, hit that, ring that bell, and I'll catch it in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.
Oh, oh, oh.